points, and, and, and I mean, me and everybody knows how I am. I like to take little pieces and kind of crack them all over. First thing Pastor Alfonso was talking about, about David, I'm going to touch on a little bit of what he's kind of said, remember what he said. When he's talking about, he said David, that he was respecting the anointing on, his, on Saul's relatives. And that's the thing, is David, see, and, and the point I want to make on that is understanding you're under authority, and then when you're placed as a leader in your church, having authority. Two big things. And David always knew that, look, this man, he, Saul, is under the anointing of God. Is he living right? No. But I'm not respecting what he's doing, but I'm respecting the calling that's been placed on his life. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to come against this man because he's still under God. God will deal with him because God's already placed something on him. That's not for me to decide. Mm -hmm. And since it came down the blood, since he was one of his relatives, he was still respecting that anointing. Because why? Whenever we're dealing with God, we always got to be what? Extra careful of everything we do. Because we don't want to get caught on the wrong side of something that God is doing. And two, he understood his authority. He understand that God put him in a position to do something, to be in control of his people. And sometimes we have to be the one in these crazy situations, whether it's in our families and churches and our communities, to be able to make sense of everything. Even when someone's threatening your life, well, wait a minute, let's stand back and think about this. When someone's threatening, when your marriage is being threatened, when your job is being threatened, when your church, when everything happens with your life is being threatened, then you stand back and make sense of what's taking place here. You see, David understood that. He understood that he needs to be the one that's always listening to what God is saying and always showing others how to lead in the right way and looking at every situation. And he knew that if this man was in the wrong, God would deal with it. See, David knew, hey, I'm living right. That's one thing for us. We go through a lot of stuff and people are going to say things to you that make us feel terrible. But you know what? I know my heart is right. And David understood that. No, I'm, not, I'm not really tripping on what he's saying. Because I know I'm living right. And two, reconciliation. I love what you're talking about. For me, I'm real big about that. Because my life was trash. And God brought everything back. See, sometimes when we go to God, we, just, we think that he's just going to fix us. Lord, I just want to be right. I don't want to be this guy no more. And just because of that, he gave me everything back. My wife, my kids. And it's kind of crazy because he even reconciled me back to my enemies. I was just talking to the brother back, back here. About a year ago, there was this man who was struggling. He wanted to be looking for a mentor. He's like, bro, I need to go somewhere, man. I got to get off the streets. I'm on the dope. I'm all this stuff. Somebody gave me a phone number. And I called this guy. I go, oh, hey, hello. I heard you were a mentor. Man. He's like, you think you can help me out? He's like, yeah, yeah. We started talking. And he goes, hey, man, so what's your name? Oh, my name is Al Michael Wildlife. He's like, where'd you grow up? And I go, well, I grew up in Guana Park. And he goes, oh, we're Guana Park, bro. <laughs> And I says, yeah. And he says, yeah, what side did you grow up on? And I thought, oh, okay. I said, I grew up in Coyotes. And he's like, yeah, and I'm from Isa. And it was crazy because you got two mortal enemy neighborhoods who are killing each other, fighting daily. Now, on this side, doing something good to help people. Mm. Instead of tearing things down. See, the thing is, is, we don't realize that we tell God, reconcile me, Lord. I want my wife back. I want my family back. Do you want a partial reconciliation or do you want the whole thing? Oh, because that's going to come so, up. Amen. And I was faced with that and I was like, whoa, wait a minute, God. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But it was such a blessing because that's when I knew that I did something in here. Amen. Because I wow. took a, a, got my head snapped back, but then I thought about it and I even told him, I go, wow, isn't God amazing, bro? Mm -hmm. Stone cold enemies. Now we're together trying to do something. Mm -hmm. Reconciliation. You want it in full. Understand what you're asking for. Amen. The presence that, you know, we're talking about being that, uh, <coughs> always being that image. And I talked to one of the brothers talking about work. I remember <clears throat> that one day I was at work and this girl walked in. Oh, she's a co-worker of mine. She comes in. <coughs> Everywhere we go, we're always supposed to be that face, that extended hand of God. In every situation, again, under authority, understanding what you're under, always willing to pull back and look at the situation as a whole. She comes walking in, she has this jacket and on the back of her jacket. She has a giant big old Baphomet symbol on the back. For those who don't know, Baphomet is just a, a satanic. She's a Satan worshiper. So I seen it and I tell her, I go, oh, you got Baphomet on the back of your jacket, huh? And she turns and she looks at me. She goes, oh, so you know about that. Ready for a fight. Ready for me to, I guess, any, any other person she, that knew about that is immediately on her. I said, oh, wow, that goes Baphomet. She's like, she's like, yeah, why was you know, why, you know about Baphomet? I said, yeah, I know them. I know what that means. We started talking, where she, and, she, and it's crazy because she was so, such expecting a fight, and I just sat back and listened. I said, oh, yeah, so what exactly does that mean? How did it come about? And she's breaking it down to me, and I can see she was all pent up, full of all this steam. But when I just sat there listening, oh, wow, well, you know, you know and I just discussing things with her. 
I go, I actually believe the opposite. I believe in good. And then she started erupting again. And I just listened to her. And then when she got done, she's like, kind of like, like, she slowed down and realized, like, he ain't saying that he's back. He's not trying to attack. He's not trying to put me down. She started telling me about her life. She cracked wide open. And she says, you know, she says, it's not that I'm just, not that I, you know, it's, it's not that I'm, you know, looking about God. I'm just angry. Why didn't he show up? And I was, she'd been sexually assaulted, all these crazy things, and I sat there, my heart broke. Mm -hmm. Because she really felt that God let her down. And she sat there in front of me, and she was crying. Tears were rolling down her face, and I go, really sorry that happened to you. I said, but you have to understand that there's people, the people that caused these actions were probably just as broken as you were. I said, it's not God. God doesn't like, he doesn't, that doesn't like these things happen. But that's the whole point of Christianity, is we're trying to fix one person at a time. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.